I'm Miss Donna, and I'm so excited about this month's new theme. I'm gonna show you a few items to see if you can guess what our theme is. Here's our first item, a metal bowl. What do you think a metal bowl could have to do with our theme this month? Here's our next item, a pot holder. What do a pot holder and a bowl have to do with each other? All right, here's the next one, a wooden spoon. So we have a bowl, a pot holder, and a spoon. Are you getting an idea? Okay, here's the last one. A baking sheet. Can you guess what this month's theme is? Yes, that's right, baking. And one of the things that is a big part of baking is waiting. You have to wait for dough to rise or things to cook or to cool down. And waiting can be really hard. It requires a lot of patience. Patience is something we're gonna be talking about all month long. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. We're gonna hear stories about people in the Bible who were patient, and we will think about ways that we can be more patient in our own lives too. In today's story, we're going to hear about someone who waited his whole life for something. He must have had to be really patient. Let's listen to today's story and find out what he was waiting for. to wait for all the things that I want. Sometimes I kind of feel like it's just taking too long to get the things I want, what I think I need, but I know you know what's best for me. I'm gonna live what I believe. I'm gonna wait cause I know you're still working. I'm gonna have patience cause it'll be worth it. I'm gonna have faith, I know you have a That you're working it out I'm gonna hold up Slow down I'm gonna trust That you're working it out Bon appetit, everyone. My name is Graham. I'm dressed like this because I want to know what it feels like to be a real chef. I want to be able to bake a cake that's as tall as me. I wanna make chocolate chip cookies that are so gooey, the chocolate stretches a full six feet. 
I want to understand what fondant is. Fondant? Fondant? I want to be able to say the word fondant. But like most things in life, becoming a real chef takes time. It takes patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. And I know a thing or two about patience. I signed up for a baking class six weeks ago that wasn't supposed to start until today. So I have to wait. And today I found out that the class has been postponed for another two weeks because our teacher is sick. It looks like she's going to be okay, but still, I have to wait some more. So now I'm wondering, what if I never get to go to class? What if it gets postponed again and again and again? What if it stays this way forever? forever. 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 The longer I have to wait, the harder it gets. If only there was some way to make the waiting not feel so hard. <laughs> Maybe there is a way. In today's story, we'll learn about a guy named Simeon who had to wait a long time for God to keep his promise. But Simeon didn't have to wait alone. So I guess I'll see you soon. I'll just wait here. Oh man, I could really go for one of those gooey chocolate chip cookies right about now. Mmm, chocolate. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, Chapter 2, verses 25 through 35. The birth of Jesus was unusual in many ways. He entered the world in a shelter with the animals and was celebrated by an entire host of angels. Glory to God in the highest. But Mary and Joseph cared for Jesus as with any child. When he was about six weeks old, they prepared to present him to the Lord at the temple. The law says we must offer a sacrifice of two pigeons. Or doves. How is he six weeks old already? But as Mary and Joseph set out for Jerusalem with their firstborn son, someone was already waiting for them, a man named Simeon, and their stories were about to collide. Simeon had grown up in Jerusalem, faithfully worshiping God. He prayed daily. Lord. Help me understand your law. Help me serve you with my whole life. Simeon would have studied the scriptures, words from the prophets from hundreds of years before. The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but a light will shine on them. What light, Lord? Over the years, Simeon continued to pray, to worship, and to seek God in the temple. God's Holy Spirit was with him. And one day, the Spirit made Simeon a promise. You will not die before you see the Lord's Messiah. Me? With my own eyes? Thank you, Lord. Simeon believed the promise and waited in joyful expectation. Will it be today, Lord? Simeon waited some more. Will it be this year, Lord? And then he waited still more. How about this decade. We aren't quite sure how long Simeon had to wait, but when his hair turned snow white, he was still waiting. Soon, Lord. Today, at last, Simeon received a new response. A temple courtyard? I I'm on my way. Uh, where's my cloak? My walking stick? God's spirit led Simeon straight up to the temple mount and into the courtyard. Simeon stood in the center of the courtyard, allowing the voices to wash around him. He wasn't quite sure what he was looking for, but he knew God would reveal it to him. A baby? Simeon turned quickly to see a young couple nearby. The man carried a pair of doves in a small cage, the usual sacrifice after a child was born. The woman cradled a tiny baby in her arms. Joseph, where do we go? Excuse me. Both the man and the woman looked up quickly 
May I hold the child? <laughs> well, all right, yes. Simeon took the child gently into his arms. In the eyes of this infant, he saw the face of God, the rescuer, God's promised Messiah. His name is Jesus. Overwhelmed, Simeon turned his gaze toward heaven. Lord, you are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. Mary and Joseph stared in amazement. We knew he was special. This. Simeon looked down at the child, then glanced up at Mary and Joseph again. May the Lord bless you both. Gently, Simeon returned Jesus to his mother's arms. After a lifetime of waiting, Simeon was overjoyed to see the fulfillment of the promise God had given him so long ago. We don't know for sure how long Simeon had to wait before he got to see Jesus, but it's possible he had to wait for years. We usually don't have to wait years for something to happen, but sometimes when we're waiting, it can feel like years. Sometimes it can feel like forever, ever, 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 ever. Like when you're waiting for your birthday or Christmas, or when you're waiting to feel better while you're sick. I know it's hard to wait, but here's the good news. You don't have to wait alone. God is with you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what the whole world is going through, and he knows how it will all turn out. So talk to God, put your trust in him. He's going to be with you through everything. In fact, God will be with you forever. So that's the one thing to remember today. When you have to wait, remember God is with you. I still have to wait for my first baking class. Maybe it'll happen in two weeks, maybe longer. But no matter what, I won't be waiting alone. God will be with me. I'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll have some gooey chocolate chip cookies for us to try by then. I wonder if the goo will stretch from me to you. I can't wait to find out. <laughs> see you then.
have you ever heard the story of Simeon before? It's not one that a lot of people know. We usually only hear about baby Jesus at Christmas time. So it was fun to hear this story today and to think about how patient Simeon had to be as he waited for his whole life for God to fulfill his promise. Year after year after year. Do you think you could wait years for something that had been promised to you? Waiting and being patient can sometimes be harder than other times. There are some things that are super hard to wait for and require us to be extra patient. I'm gonna read you a few scenarios and I want you to think about how hard it would be to wait and be patient in that scenario. If you don't think it would be very hard, you can hold up one finger. If you think it'd be kind of hard, you can hold up two fingers. If you think it'd be really hard, hold up three fingers. Okay, are you ready? Here's our first scenario. You're waiting for your favorite dinner to be ready and you are really hungry. Would that be really hard? So hold up one finger if you think it's not that hard. Or hold up two fingers if you think it's kind of hard. And three fingers if you think it's really hard. What do you think? I think for me that would be two fingers hard. Here's our next scenario. You're waiting for your mom to be done with her work call to answer your question. Would that be not super hard? Hold up one finger. Kind of hard? Hold up two fingers. Or really hard, hold up three fingers. I think for me, that would be one finger hard. All right, here's another one. You're waiting for Christmas morning. Would that be not super hard? Hold up one finger. Kind of hard, hold up two fingers. Really hard, hold up three fingers. Yeah, for me, that is three fingers hard waiting for Christmas morning. Okay, last one. You're waiting for your birthday party to start. Is that not super hard? or kind of hard, or really hard? What is it for you? For me, I think that's like two fingers hard. Waiting can sometimes be really hard, but when you have to wait, remember God is with you. It helps me to talk to God when I'm waiting and ask him to help me be patient. Let's try that right now. Can you close your eyes and sit really still? Can you think of something you're waiting for? Maybe you're waiting to go back to school Maybe you're waiting to see your grandparents or your friends again. Or maybe you're waiting to finally be able to go on a trip. Did you think of something you were waiting for? Okay, good. Now I'm just gonna give you a little bit of quiet time to talk to God about that thing and ask him to help you to be patient and to remember that he is with you. Isn't it great that we can talk to God whenever we want because he is always with us? Even when we're waiting and feeling frustrated or angry, he is still with us. All right, I have something that you can make to remind you that when you have to wait, remember God is with you. You will need two empty water or soda bottles that look kind of like this. And on the lid of one of them, you will need to ask your grown-up to help you to poke a hole in the top. See how I have a hole in there? And then you're gonna fill it up with sand. So here, I, you can take the, the um, wrapper off it, and you're gonna fill it about like halfway or so with sand. And if you don't have sand at your house, you could maybe wait and go get some at the beach the next time you're there. So have your grown-up, you're gonna screw that lid back on, and once it's on, it's a good time to make your hole. And I just used a corkscrew like this that was really easy to put a hole in it. But you could use scissors or whatever else you wanted. Then you're going to take your second bottle. And on that bottle, you can, take off, you can take off the wrapper or you can just leave it on. And you're going to print out online, you'll see a page like this that said, God is with me when I'm waiting. So then I'm going to tape that piece of paper on just like this. So see, I've got it all taped on. And once I have it like that, I see this one doesn't have a lid on and this one has a lid, but it's the one with the hole. And you're gonna put them right on top of each other and tape them together. The best way to do that is with duct tape, you know, this kind of tape like that. But other tape will work too. So I'm just going to put the bottles together and tape them just like this. And once I have them taped together, see how they're together like this? I've made myself like a sand timer. 
and I can tip it upside down and watch the sand go from the top into the bottom. And while it's going from the top into the bottom, I can remember that God is with me when I'm waiting and I can pray this whole time the sand is going down into this bottle. I can pray and ask God to help me to be patient and help me to be to do a good job while I'm waiting of um, doing all the things he would want me to do while I'm waiting. Waiting can be really hard and we still need to make good choices while we're waiting. So while your bottle is filling up like that, you can take that time to pray and talk to God. Sometimes I can feel God is with me even if I can't see him. Because when you have to wait, I hope that that sand timer can remind you that God is with you and you can talk to him anytime. Our verse this month is a good reminder about waiting. Let's try saying it together. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. I wonder what you think wait for the Lord means. I think it means a big part of waiting is trusting that God is in charge and that we can trust him. Waiting can be hard and requires us to be strong and patient and not lose hope when it feels like we've been waiting for a long time. We can wait for the Lord to do things in his time and in his way because we know how much he loves us and cares for us. Well, let's try putting some hand motions to that verse to help us remember it. When we say wait, let's point to a pretend watch on our wrist. Then when we say four, show me four fingers. And then when we say the Lord, point up to heaven. Let's try it. Wait for the Lord. Good job. Now let's add in two more hand motions. When we say be strong, show me your strong muscles like this. And, we, and when we say don't lose hope, shake your finger and head like this. Don't lose hope. Now let's put it all together. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. All right, let's try it one more time. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. Great job, everyone. This verse tells us something very important, not to lose hope. It would have been easy for Simeon to lose hope since he waited for so long. But you know what? When we can trust God with our future like Simeon did, we can wait. When we can trust that God always keeps his promises and we know that he is with us, it makes the wait a little more bearable. So when you have to wait, remember God is with you. Let's pray. God, we know that you are always with us, but when things get tough and our patience is tested, we can forget that you're there. When we're waiting for things, God, will you help us to remember that you are with us and will you will help us to have patience. Thank you, God, for being with us and never, ever leaving us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, friends. See you next time.